joined us for our young family service camp edition. We're certainly glad for you to stay for as much of our main congregational service as you'd like. So this is not a closing time song, but it is me saying Shabbat Shalom if you're on your way out. And Shabbat Shalom to everybody who's on your way in. Feel free to take a seat. I know Diane is handing out prayer books. We're going to begin our service in just a moment. I'd like to say also a special Shabbat Shalom to those who are joining us on Zoom. I know more people these days feel comfortable joining in the warmth of your homes from Zoom, and you're welcome to do so from week to week. And we're also so glad to see those of you who have come here because you are TBT fans and Camp Laurelwood fans. Any Camp Laurelwood fans in the house tonight? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Any Camp Laurelwood fans in the house tonight? Any TBT fans in the house tonight? Any Mel Siegels in the house tonight? <laughs> well, I almost couldn't hear her. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, it is such a special time to gather together here in these really dark days of winter when the sun feels really far away. It certainly is lovely to bring the light into our community by being together, by sharing that sense of yachadut, of togetherness and fellowship. We'll begin with a song of togetherness. Now, it is Camp Shabbat, so we're going to have a couple of different variations. Is that fair to say, Cantor? Yep. When it comes to our repertoire this evening. So this service is for all the kids and for all the kids at heart. And if you're not either of those things, well, I'm sorry, I just don't believe you. So I invite the inner child to please come out and play with us, sing with us, celebrate and welcome Shabbat with us. We're on page 128. Well, this is a special Shabbat, as I alluded to before. And uh, we're really glad uh, that we are joined today by some special friends from Camp Laurelwood. I see Elizabeth in the back, back there, and thank you for all you did in our young family service and engaging those, those tots and their fans. And, uh, and to Rabbi James Green, who is the executive director here at camp, and to the whole Green family, we're so glad that you're here and especially grateful for the uh, warm welcome and consistent uh, partnership that you have shown to us in our moment of need and our time of homelessness. To be here is truly wonderful and it's great to be able to celebrate camp and all things camp together. You can see Cantor and I are both wearing our camp shirts. Perhaps others here have some camp swag. I see um, some camp masks. I think Craig there in the back has his Laurelwood mask, right? Okay, very good. Camp and leggings. so, say again? Camp leggings. Where's the camp leggings? <laughs> Who has camp leggings? Talia. That's awesome. I didn't even notice those. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Diana. So uh, that's a perfect segue because um, Talia can show off her camp leggings and the fa fashion statement they entail when she comes up with their family. So Rabbi James Green and Jen and Talia and Cole, please come on up and uh, light some Shabbat candles with us, won't you? 
to bring in the warmth of Shabbat, we're on page 120, following the bracketed page numbers in your prayer book. Just out of curiosity, a show of hands, those of you who are in the uh, Kihila, the community here or on Zoom, how many of you have ever spent a summer or a session at a summer camp before? That's a lot. Wow, I'd say that's, yeah, that's, that's a good 70% of people here in person. And how many of you have ever spent uh, a session at a Jewish summer camp before? I love that. See, Cantor with her Ramah sweatshirt. And I am actually wearing a Laurelwood shirt today, but I could also be wearing my Azrui shirt, which is the summer camp that I grew up at. And I know Rabbi Green also was there. It's a very special connection. It's, it's hard to even know how to start talking about what makes camp so fantastic, because truly words don't really capture the fullness of it. The fullness of it comes in feelings and memories and special moments shared around the campfire singing Shabbat songs together, uh, challenging oneself to accomplish new things on the ropes course, or just making a new friend, perhaps a deeper friend for the first time. There are so many things that summer camp does so wonderfully and so many ways that it helps us grow. Um, and so I won't wax poetic forever about that, but I know that for me, one of the things that, that, that most energized me about camp was that it was the first place that singing wasn't just cool, it was part of who we are. It was part of how we do things. It was part of the joy and sometimes the sad feelings and sometimes the hard feelings. But whatever we were doing, it would always lead into song. And there is really nothing that's more Jewish than that. Right, Cantor? I know that I'm lobbing you a softball with that question. <laughs> and it's even right there in our Psalms. Shiru Adonai Shir Chadash, sing out to God a new song. The uh, commentator from medieval times, uh, David Kimchi, says you should make your song new tamid when he looks at these words. Shiru Adonai Shir Chadash, make a new song. Every time you sing the old words, find a new energy in it. So I invite us, even if we've sung this psalm a million times, to pretend as though it is our first, to feel in our hearts the new energy that comes with this beautiful moment of Shabbat, this gift that we experience together. Page 131, let's raise our voices. Oh, uh -huh. 
clap our hands to this beat. Yeah. I think I asked Rabbi Green this when we met over the summer, but camp has a tradition of dressing up in white for Shabbat. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and, and a lot of the summer camps um, that we might have grown up at has a tradition um, where, where we all get dressed up in white, and maybe it was like that for you at Camp Vermont? Mm-hmm. Actually, it was not a tradition at Azrui that everybody did that, but I certainly got into that tradition, and it comes out of the idea that we're all... Um, going to this beautiful wedding. We're all invited every single week to be guests at this ceremony of union between God and the Jewish people, and that there's no better way to get ready for a party than by putting on something special. So just like we change our clothes when we get ready for L'cha Dodi, we change our hearts as we get ready for Shabbat. We come to it with a new appreciation for that which is holy and special in our lives. And so, um, you know, many of us put on special clothing to be here tonight. If you didn't, I invite you to think at this point about what is something special that you might like to do and make a ritual of just this week or perhaps to start a new tradition to mark this time as a time of specialness, of celebration, of togetherness and great joy, which it is. So I'll join us. I'll invite us all to sing Lecha Dodi, which is on page 138. Let's hear you. Voices now and face the entrance to welcome Shabbat.
Shabbat always begins with a greeting, a hello to our loved ones in our liturgical tradition, to the angels that come and wish us peace, wish us relaxation over, you know, sometimes a difficult week. I know many of us have had a week. There are challenges that come up. There's stress. There's a cold going around, you know. There's so much in our world that feels like it wears us down. But the essential message is that we can start to work against that by a connection, by a loving glance, by a word shared of care and compassion, by a hug from mom and dad, whatever it might be. And so I'll invite us just to uh, offer a shalom, offer a word of greeting, check in with somebody near you, maybe somebody you came in with, maybe somebody you didn't say shalom to yet tonight. Let's all take a moment just to offer each other shalom. Shalom Aleichem, peace to you, peace, shalom. As we're greeting one another, we also turn to these words in our prayer book on page 142. Page 142. Shalom. are really easy. Yai, bai, 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 yai, bai, bai, Try a harmony. I'm looking at the very musical people in the first couple rows here.
turn to a gratitude for light renewing itself day by day. When the nights feel very long, it's of course such a comfort to know that the light will come back each morning. And so we have a fun song version of this prayer that Cantor will teach us. The English words are not in your prayer book, but I'm sure Cantor will help us know what they are. Yes. So the words are roll into dark, roll into night, night becomes day, Day turns to night. Amen. 
page 150. Let's read together in English the gift of Torah. Everlasting love you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel. Together, Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai. One of the things I love about this community here tonight is that you are all clearly singers. And I don't know about you, Cantor, but I've so appreciated hearing the harmonies and beautiful sounds that we can make together when we raise our voices. Our friends on Zoom, we haven't forgotten about you either. You know, there's a lot of you out there and you're with us singing too. And your voices add to our prayers too, even though we can't hear you in quite the same way. So please keep on singing unabashedly, unashamedly, right at your computer screen. It sounds great. So many of the Torah stories have songs connected to them or have songs as part of their trajectory of the plot. And that's where the Micha Mocha comes from. It's the freedom song of our people. Uh, Moses has this song with Miriam. Moses has a later song, which is the entire last book of the, the Torah. And then he has a poetic song that he ends it with. Um, the entire story of Joseph is, is consists of songs. That's, of course, according to the Andrew Lloyd Webber Midrash. But, uh, but nevertheless, thank you, Stu. That was mostly directed at you. Uh, nevertheless, when, uh, when big events happen, when these stories enter our hearts, it often expresses itself in song. And so we'll sing this upbeat, exciting Micha Mocha on page 158. Please do sing along. Please clap your hands. Let's have a great day.
ונאמר כי פדה אדוני את יעקב וגאלו מיד חזק ממנו ברוך אתה אדוני גאל ישראל. On page 161, let's read together in English these words from the Hashki Venu prayer. Give us a place to rest, Adonai our God, together. Bring us into shelter in the soft, long evening shadows of your truth. For with you are true protection and safety, and in your presence are acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth, prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace, over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch Ata Adonai, Apores Sukat Shalom, Aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael, ve'al Yerushalayim. As we prepare to enter the Amidah, I am uh, reminded in those words of the beautiful canopy, the beautiful Sukkot Shalom that Rabbi Green spread out over our beautiful young children as their parents blessed them. And so may we find some measure of safety and shalom in these days which are not always easy to go through. Nevertheless, I think we all would agree that it makes it easier when we can do that as a community. We turn to page 164 and we rise together for the Amidah. Amen. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agitehilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Maruch Adonai Eloheinu attention for just a moment to the following page. On page 171 is an excerpt from a beautiful prayer by the medieval Spanish poet Yehuda Halevi, who asks, Yahanan Sa'acha, where might I go to find you, exalted hidden one? Yet where would I not go to find you, ever-present eternal one? My heart cries out to you, please draw near to me. And the moment I reach out for you, I find you reaching in for me. 
This is the essence of our personal prayer, of our kavana, our intention. The moment we reach out for God, we feel God reaching toward us. We take a few moments now of silent prayer. Take a moment now to think of all those in our community who are in need of healing, all those in a broken world who are in need of strength. We first name our members, April Diamato, Norma Diamond, Henry Gettenberg, Sandra Hyman, Josh Lipschitz, and Sabrina Maurer, and our loved ones, Connie Ambrosino, Rebecca Morris, Sally Catrill, Mikhail Levin, Rochelle Downheimer, Harriet Cohn Haggerty, Mickey Bart, Jay Fliss, Sue Yeris, Soraya Casey, Jeffrey Indies, Helen Dreyfus, Martha Foley, Claude Scales, Anne Marie Weiler, Carolyn Gold, Marion Matkin, Ben Peck, Mark Potter, Martha Potter, Melissa Mihalko, Joan Sidney, Maggie Atkinson, David Char, Amelia Sidney, Josephine Sidney, Ira Weiss, Albert Acabo, Judith O'Connor, Josh Cohen, Elizabeth Powers Brown, and Felicia Vulstra. If there are others we'd like to hold in mind for healing prayers, 
Feel free to share their name. If you're on Zoom, you can type their name into the chat. And if you're here, you can say aloud, if you'd like, as I come around the room. Or you can share their name, of course, in private thoughts. Becky Sherman. Robert Michelle. Thank you. We turn now to page 371. We pray that in the merit of our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Valeya, that they should know a healing of body, a healing of mind, a refua shalema. as I said at the beginning of the service, how lovely it is that we can be here with our friends from Camp Laurel Wood. And, uh, and I'm very grateful to Rabbi James Green, who's going to share a few words of Torah with us. So please, Rabbi. Hi, Shabbat Shalom. What a blessing to be here with you all. I'm so grateful and so grateful that uh, there are folks from our community who are here and, and uh, that we have the ability to celebrate Shabbat together. Uh, Rabbi Moss and Cantor Boyle talked with us about the Mishaberach, about a blessing where we rely on the goodness of our ancestors uh, to ask for, for healing for those in our community who are in need. I am going to take us in the other direction, and instead of us talking about our ancestors, we're going to talk a little about uh, about the those who are next in line. Um, so, Jen, my partner, and our daughters, Talia and Cole, and I live on a homestead in Stafford, Connecticut. Um, and one of the things that we do there is we have a garden and we raise chickens and turkeys and it's a lot of fun. Actually, some of our turkeys uh, live here with us, or some of our chickens, I should say, live here with us over the summer at camp, which is uh, great. Um, one of the things that I've, I found fascinating about the experience of, uh, of being on a homestead is the act of watching things grow, right? What Heschel calls the small miracles of every day. Um, and I don't think I really understood it until the first time we planted something on our homestead, probably now six years ago, five years ago, something like that. Um, there is this magic, this magical experience that happens when you put seeds in the ground, which is that you... Um, you do this really incredible thing, this act of faith, uh, and then you let go of control 
right? And you can till and you can tend as much as you want, but as any of you who are gardeners will know, that in the end, uh, something is not up to you, right? There's something magical, there's something larger at play that happens there. Um, something uh, Robert Fulgram, who uh, wrote Everything I Need to Know I Learned uh, in Kindergarten, if any of you know that, that work, which is an amazing piece of Torah in its own right, um, he talks about that. He says that, that, um, that you, know, you plant seeds in a little paper cup and the seeds go down and they go up and no one really knows why, but that's just how it is. Right? There's something magical about that and about the tilling and tending that comes from it. Um, when I'll, uh, I don't usually get to give Divrei Torah in my work, and so it's always a blessing not just to be able to do that, but to tell a story and try to embarrass one of my kids. So let me tell you a story about Talia when she was younger. Talia came into our, uh, our room. It's one of my favorite stories about her. Talia came into our room, probably she was three and a half, maybe she was four at that time. She came into our room. She had had a bad dream. She came in, you know, uh, a hand on her eye, uh, and the other hand was holding her lammy, her, uh, her stuffed animal that she has, has had since she was born. She came into our room and she said, Abba, I want to get into bed and cuddle with you. And I said, in, you know, when I was sort of half asleep, I said, no, you'll be fine. Go back to your room. You'll be okay. And she looked at me with the most intense sincerity and said, but Abba, but Dad, one day I'm going to grow up and I'm not going to want to cuddle with you anymore. <laughs> Uh, and I like took my breath away, right? And then from that moment on, I mean, Talia has always owned me, but uh, from that moment on, sure, come on in, right? Uh, there is something about the tilling and tending that we do that, uh, that then sort of goes off on its own and we lose control over it, right? And that is a really beautiful thing. It's a really powerful thing to see. It's a really beautiful thing to see. Uh, this week's Torah portion is really, it's, it's Vayachi, it's the end of the book of Genesis. It speaks uh, pretty profoundly about that letting go and about the tilling and tending that elders do for the young people in their lives that they care about. Uh, in it, uh, Jacob has the opportunity to bless his descendants. Uh, and he says, uh, he says, um, uh, may you, uh, he says, uh, may you be like, uh, Ephraim and Manasha, can you, that he asks for us to, to bless them in this, uh, in this very profound way. And then, and we, we take that on in, uh, in each week, uh, where we offer the, the priestly blessing for our children. It's part of the Shabbat ritual. It's one of my favorite pieces here in our, um, in our Seder, in our tradition at camp. Uh, our counselors come and they bless their campers on Friday night, uh, sitting around our, our dinner table. And uh, it is this moment of tilling and tending, right? It is that moment of standing at the garden, just uh, tending around the edges and watching something miraculous grow. It reminds me of, uh, of, a, of another story from, uh, from Shira Shirim Rabbah, from, uh, from the Midrash Rabbah, uh, a collection of, uh, of Midrash from the sort of early or middle rabbinic period. Uh, and, uh, and in it, uh, God is trying to discern whether to give the Torah to the Israelites. And, the Israelite, and God says, what are you going to, like, tell me how am I going to know? How can I trust you with this? This is important, right? It's not just nothing. How can I trust you with it? And, uh, and, and the Israelites start with where, where we start with the Misha Beirach, uh, and, say, and they say, you have our ancestors. You know us. That's going to be our guarantee, right? That's what's going to tell you. God says, I'm sorry. That's not enough. Think about it again. They come back, the Israelites come back, and they say, how about this? Our prophets those people who carry your word, that's going to be our guarantee, right? And God says, that's good, right? We're heading in the right direction. Still not enough. It's not, it's not enough. What else you got? The Israelites think about it again. They come back and they say, our children will be our guarantee. God says, okay, here's the Torah, right? There is something magical about that tilling and that tending and the things that we do when we put seeds in the ground and we watch them grow, it is profound. It's one of the things that it's 
one of the things that I love about my work here at camp. We, uh, we get to watch these seeds that have been put into the ground and we get to be part of that tilling and tending process um, and we get to watch them sprout into the most amazing things, right? The most amazing things, like Mel. Uh, and the other hundreds, thousands of campers who have called home, who have called Laurelwood home over the 85 years we've been here. Uh, it's the tilling and tending that comes from, from priestly blessings at Shabbat dinner or singing David Melech on Friday nights at services. Uh, it is the tilling and tending that comes from uh, one-on-one -on -one conversations with counselors and campers, and uh, it's the stories that get told, that pass down from generation to generation. That's the way that we till and tend. Uh, and so I want to invite you, as we, uh, as we think about that work, that really sacred tilling and tending tonight, I want to invite you to look at the, the seedlings that you brought here tonight, and to think about what's the kind of uh, what's the kind of tilling and tending that you want to invest in them, and what's the what's the new growth that you're hoping they'll sprout this week. So think about that. Maybe lean over and you can whisper to them. No one's listening. I promise. You can whisper to them. What's one thing that you want them to sprout this week? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as we uh, as we finish reading, as we finish reading the book of Genesis, we say Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazak. We should be strong. We should be strong, and we should be strengthened. And we know that when um, we know that we are stronger uh, when we are together, we know that we are strengthened because of the guarantees, the guarantors that we have sitting with us here in this room, uh, because of the guarantors who call really special places like TBT and Camp Laurelwood home, and uh, because of the tilling and the tending that we all get the opportunity to do in all these most amazing ways. Thank you so much. Shabbat shalom. Thank you for your beautiful and touching words. That work of tilling and tending is a lifetime pursuit, and it's one that's best done in community. So we're very glad to cultivate the relationship between camp and TBT. I think we don't always stop to appreciate how special it is that in a place like Madison, Connecticut, we can drive five, eight minutes and be at a Jewish summer camp. That's a place of nurture and growth for our, for our kids. And, uh, and, and it's something that I certainly don't take for granted. Now, I heard a reference in the Devar Torah to a special camp tradition. <laughs> What's that? Talia, you want to come lead that? No? Okay, I think we need all of our camp Laurelwood kids to come up with Craig.
I was told to expect something fun, but even I was not expecting that. I will say, you all probably don't know Craig very well, although let, you should please feel free to, to, to go up to Craig and introduce yourself afterwards because he makes sure that we can be in here and warm and safe and uh, we're very appreciative to that. But Craig, generally my impression of you so far is that you're kind of a soft-spoken guy and <laughs> kind of, you know, kind of a humble guy. I'm not joking, I'm not joking, truly soft-spoken, humble guy. So I can't imagine you know, people who know you from other walks of life, if they were to see that side of you, it might be quite an interesting surprise. Um, so Karen Goldberg, follow that. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everyone. My name is Karen Goldberg, and I'm the vice uh, president on the board of directors. A warm welcome to any guests we have with us tonight. Tomorrow, join us for Jewish Medi Mindfulness and Meditation at 8 a.m. on Zoom, followed by Torah Study at 9 a.m., also on Zoom, led by Cantor Boyle. Links are in your inbox. This Sunday, December 19th, Religious School is on its normal schedule. Men's Club will meet on Zoom at 9.45 with a class led by Rabbi Moss at 10.30. Unfortunately, due to space constraints, Israeli dancing is canceled. We hope to reschedule, so please check your inbox for news on that. Um, on Friday, December 24th and 31st, our services will be on Zoom only. We'll be back at Camp Laurelwood for the first Friday of January. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks very much, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> She'll do the hand signals afterwards, Stu. All right, we'll, uh, we'll conclude our service now, beginning on page 586 with Aleinu L'Shabeach. Invite you to please rise. Aleinu L'Shabeach l'adon hakol L'atet gedula l'yotze hebreshit Shelo asaru gedoye haratzot Velo samonu kemishpechot haadama Shelo sam chelkeinu kahem Vegor aleinu kechol hamonam Ma'anachnu korim Umishtachavim umodim Mifnei melech Mothe hamlachim Hakadosh baruch hu 591 Have a seat. The light of life is a finite flame. Like the Shabbat candles, life is kindled. It burns, it glows, it is radiant with warmth and beauty, but soon it fades, its substance is consumed, and it is no more. Yet the light continues to shine in our hearts for those we have loved and lost. We think this evening of the Friedman family, in the period of Shloshim, Deborah Friedman, mother of Eric and Lori Friedman. We think of all those lost in the Sandy Hook tragedy those years ago. We think of all of those who are observing a yard site in our community tonight. And feel free to uh, rise if you have a yard site as I read the name of your loved one. Evelyn Krug, Phyllis Perlick, Larry Kabanoff, Richard Kramer, Daniel Deutsch, Miriam Gallo, Emmanuel Stecker, Catherine Verdi, Nathaniel Fenton, Oscar Bregman, Lorraine Davis, Adam Ecker, Martha Levitz-Lurie, Martha Wirt Davis, Sylvia Deutsch, 
William Walzer, Melvin Robinson, and Carol Mower. If there's anyone else saying Kaddish, I invite you to please share the name of your loved one as I come around the room, or if you're on Zoom, you can type their name in the chat and I'll read it aloud. We add also Bernie Delitsky. I'll invite us to rise as one congregation in sympathy and solidarity with our mourners here tonight and with all of those who mourn among our people as we share these hallowed words on page 598. Yit Gadal Yit Kadash Shemei Rabah Bialma divra chirute viam lich monchute, Vichae chon veyome chon, Vichae de chobet Israel, Ba agala uvisman kariv imru, amen. Yehe shme rabba mevorach, lealam uliel mea maya, Eat barach vish tabach, eat baar vit romam vit nasse, Vit adar vit alev yit halal, shme de kudisha brichu, Le ela min kol birchata vishirata. Tushbechata v'nechamata da amiran be'alma v'yimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Ose shalom b'yimromav huya ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. May the one who causes peace to reign in the heavens above bring peace and comfort to all who mourn. As together we say, Amen. amen. Ose shalom bimramav, huya se shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imeru. have a seat. Uh, now, we'll do Kiddush in a second. I just wanted to say, though, for our closing song, which will invite all of our camp friends to come up and lead, um, Rabbi Green, I think I saw that you had a guitar back there. Would you like to join for that closing song? I, I guess that it's not too good, so maybe, maybe it's not the right. <laughs> to, to, totally up to you. To, totally up to you. Um, in the meantime, I'd invite anybody who has not yet become bar or bat mitzvah, but maybe soon, some of you, uh, to, to come up uh, and help us lead uh, Kiddush and Motzi. What do you say? Come on, everybody. Tali and Devery, come on up. <laughs> Thank you for being very specific. <laughs> and anyone else who wants is welcome. Yeah, that's right. You guys can come around here. Come around with me and Cantor. Just given that there's colds and stuff going around, I'm going to wait to give out the challah until after the service. Come up, get some hand sanitizer, and parents, you can give to your kids um, if you want. Sorry for the delayed satisfaction, my young friends. All right, are we ready to lead the kiddush together? OK, I know you can do the first part with us, at least. Here we go. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three.
B are really ready. I can hear it. Nice singing, guys. All right, should we um, say the blessing over the challah together? What do you say? Who wants to, who wants to take it off? Here we go. On the count of shalosh. Echad, shtayim, shalosh. Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Amotzi lachem min haaretz, Betayam. You can come and get some with your parents afterwards. Thank you, everybody, for being up here. And if you want to help lead our closing song, you can stay. Anybody who wants to, you're welcome to, okay? It's like a little choir over here, can't you? I love I it. Um, can, we invite, can we also invite our, our other camp folks back there, like Mel, Elizabeth, Craig, can you come up here? And Elizabeth, do you want to just say a quick word of introduction? We haven't heard your voice in this service, but it would be lovely to. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's nice to see some familiar faces. Um, I, I'm Elizabeth. I work here at Laurelwood. Um, I also grew up at TBT, so it's like really full circle for me. Um, and I think I babysat this one over here <laughs> way back in the day. Um, I uh, run our family camp programming and do community engagement work. Um, and I'm also working on some camper care um, stuff for this coming summer. So it's just great to have you. Thanks for being part of Laurelwood. Um, and yeah, I think I'll pass to you. Do you want to tell them about the special treat? Oh, yeah. I almost, how could I forget? Um, we live lovingly prepared for you to go s'mores. So just get really excited about that with some very fancy chocolate. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Green. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And um, all of our friends who are up here are going to help us lead our closing song, which is Od Yavo, Salam, Shalom. May peace come for us and for all the world. I think you know this one, right, folks? All right, let's try it together with cancer. Here we go. everybody for bringing a little more joy and camp fun into a uh, winter weekend. We hope you all have a great Shabbat. It's good to see you and we look forward to seeing more of you at TBT and hopefully at Camp Laurelwood too. So um, hopefully our Laurelwood folks will stay around for a few minutes if you have any questions for them and we wish everybody Shabbat Shalom.